the moment we set foot on this world. It was like a dream. A world untouched by our past mistakes. Pristine and full of promise, we reveled in the novelty of unexplored landscapes and unseen horizons. It was the dawn of a new era for mankind, but our initial awe and exhilaration soon gave way to a creeping realization. We were not alone. Hello guys, in this full beginner tutorial I'm going to show you how I created this trailer using free assets from Cargo, a Kitbash 3D product. We will see how to import assets, ground creation, camera animation, HDRI, fog, vehicle rigging, smoke and a bit of composition in DaVinci Resolve. To install Cargo you go on kitbash3d.com and here you click on download Cargo. You save this file, cargo.zip, on your hard drive. Once you have the file on your hard drive, you have to unzip it, and then you can launch this setup. The installation process is pretty standard. You just have to install the application on your hard drive. Then you will have to choose a 3D software. I did choose Blender and a version. At the moment, Cargo is only working with Blender 3.5, but I'm sure a patch will be released very soon. And you can also define your default texture. I went for 2K. I did not mention it, but you will have to create an account to access Cargo, but this account is free. Once you have Cargo installed, you will have this interface where you can find the different kits, all right? The models, the materials, and your account. For the free assets, we want to go in models, and here in access, you select free. And those are all the free assets that we can use in our project, that we can import and use in our projects. There is a paid plan for Cargo to access all the different kits, but I will talk about that in another video, as today the purpose is to use free assets. Now that Cargo is installed, let's create this scene, as it is one of the most complicated. So we will have everything that we need for the other shots. Let's start with the ground creation. In Blender, you delete the default cube. So you select the cube and press delete. We need the ground, so let's add a plane, shift A, mesh, and plane. Now we press N to have this menu and we'll change the size of this plane. Here in dimensions, you select X and Y and you write 200, so we have this ground. Now if I switch to material preview mode, I can see that I have no material actually on the plane, so we should fix that now. Let's go in cargo, you go in materials, and access, you select free, and let's choose a material for the ground. I have selected this one, the volcanic planet terrain, so you click on it, I select the texture size, 2K is okay for me, and you click import. After a few seconds, you will have the material available in Blender. Back in Blender, you select the plane, you click here on material properties, and on this little drop down, you should have the material available. So you click on it, and it will be applied to our plane. Now, if you go in shading here, you will see that you have all the nodes and all the material will be applied automatically. But uh, the main issue I have is the scaling of uh, this uh, material applied. First, let's go in Edit, Preferences, Add-on, and be sure that you have the Node Wrangler activated. So you just click on this little checkbox. And here, for example, you will select the base color and you will press Ctrl T on your keyboard so you will have uh, the texture coordinate and mapping already generated by uh, the node wrangler and you connect the vector to all those vectors because we will change the uh, scaling of this so uh, here in scale okay i can zoom a little bit and here you can select x and y and just scale the scaling a bit, maybe for four. This step is uh, optional, but I like to do it to have more definition 
when we will uh, use uh, the displacement. And you will see what I'm talking about in a few seconds. And now you can go back in uh, layout. The issue we have now is that the plane is uh, flat. <laughs> it's not <laughs> really a, a ground at the moment. So let's fix that. And here, if you check this plane, if you go in wireframe, you can see that there is only one face, okay? Four edges, but one big face. And we don't want that. We need uh, more definition in order to add our uh, displacement. So in order to do that, uh, you click, uh, you have the plane selected. And here you go in modifier properties, you click on add modifier and let's add some resolution. So you go in subdivision surface here, you select simple and you raise it. Okay, six for example, and you click here apply. So now we have a more definition. Let's do it one more time. Subdivision and maybe two and simple and apply. So now we have a lot of uh, definition on our plane. So let's go back in material preview. And now we can add another modifier. So add modifier. And this time we will add a deform modifier, which is displace, right? So you click on displace and actually there is uh, uh, nothing, no, no change. So we will add a new texture, right? And for the texture, you come here on the texture properties. You select the image or movie. That's perfect. And let's select the eight. Okay, this one, the eight. And boom, now we have eight selected. We can go back in the material, the modifier properties, I mean. And we can raise the strengths. And boom, now you can see that there is some deformation on the ground. And that's why I wanted to change the scaling because I wanted some details on the deformation, okay? So for the first one, you don't have to do a lot of deformation because that will be our main ground. So let's do something very subtle, maybe a little bit more. Yeah, something like that, around the six. And what you can do now, you do not apply this modifier from now. Let's create a new collection first. So right click, new collection. Let's name it, uh, let's name it ground. And let's move the plane here in this uh, ground selection. So let's call this one the main ground. Main ground. And what we can do, you click on this one and shift D to duplicate it. Okay, so we can have another one. So this is uh, the ground, ground one, for example. And with this uh, ground one, we are going to scale it. Okay, maybe something like that to 300, I will say. Yeah, maybe 400, let's go 400. Something like that. And we can change the uh, strength. Okay, to have more bumps, right? And here you can see that we are losing some details. So right click and shade smooth. And we will use this plane to create some mountains. And when you have this, you can apply the displace modifier. So here and apply. And now if I go in edit mode by pressing tab, I will be able to select a point. For example, uh, here you activate the proportional editing. Okay, you press a G to move this point and wheel down something like that. And if you press Z to move it up, as you can see, I can create a mountain here. You can do the same wherever you want. So G and Z. All right. If you have this issue when you're scrolling back, you don't see everything, just go in view and you change the end here it's 1000 let's go 10000 so you can see everything now you can duplicate this one again so shift d you move it you change the scale to 400 right and you move the displacement you change the displacement something like that maybe let's duplicate it again so you don't have to do it and apply you select a print in g you change the size if you want and you create another mountain. 
And you can do this uh, as many times as you want. From there, what I like to do is to define my uh, camera frame. So let's do that. Okay, let's say we, are, we want our camera one here. You press Control Alt Zero, so you will have this uh, camera frame. Zero again to go out. Here you go in this corner, you drag it to have another window and let's do it one more time this way. And this window will be dedicated to the camera so I can press a zero on the numpad and let's hide all the different tools and let's frame it correctly. Let's hide everything. So this is our camera framing. And here, for example, you could have a shader editor or whatever you want. One thing before we continue concerning the camera, we want a cinematic aspect ratio. So you go here in uh, output properties and you change the Y size to 817. Good. This is the cinematic ratio. We do not see the mountains uh, behind. It's because our camera, yeah, I have an end at 100 meter. Let's change that to one 5,000, for example, and now we can see the mountains. Cool. If we look at the reference, we can see that I placed my camera nearly on the ground. So let's do that. Let's select the camera. You press numpad period and let's lower the level of the, the camera like this. And the good thing to have this uh, view is that you can see the result directly. Let's move the X a little bit and Let's lower the camera again, and maybe we're gonna move it a little bit, just like that. You should activate the depth of field, and for now, let's just create a focus point that we will move later. All right, so Shift A, empty, plane axis. So my plane axis is here. Let's move it. Uh, M, I will just move it to the collection, this collection, and let's move this point for now just to here. Let's raise it a bit, okay, somewhere here. And we will tell the camera, let's name it focus. In the camera, let's focus this guy, so focus. Now for the f-stop, for now I will go around 0 0.8. And from there, I will just duplicate this guy all to D this time. No, no need to do shift D because I will not, I will not change anything. Okay, that's okay for, for now for the ground. Uh, it's time to place some elements in the scene and then we will tweak the mountains and all the stuff after we place some uh, elements in the scene. So let's do that just after this quick shout out. Hello everyone and welcome to the ride, my Blender car animation course created for beginners and intermediate users who want to get into car animation. I'm so proud to present this project. It's more than 64 videos and 11 hours of training and today I can finally share it with you. In this course you are going to cover all the topics you need to master in order to create your own 3D projects such as environment design, lighting, animation, camera animation, camera framing for TikTok, Instagram or YouTube short, smoke simulation, <laughs> DaVinci Resolve, sound effects and the list goes on. I will also provide all the necessary assets that you need to follow along. My updated city pack with skyscrapers, city props and 22 new buildings that you can use in all your animations. HDRI magic to create realistic animations in a few clicks. You will also get this C63 AMG, this OD RS5, this Corvette C8 and this beautiful Mustang. Yes, everything is included in this course. Back in cargo, you go on kits and you scroll down until you find the mission to Minerva. So we are sure to only have the assets from the kit mission to Minerva. This is the kit that we want to use. And for the first building, I selected this one, the Terraformer. You can see that it's a pretty big uh, building. So to import it, just click import. So back in Blender, after a few seconds, you will have your building imported. And just to keep things organized, let's create a new collection. So right click new collection and I will name this collection Minerva. You can name it whatever you want and right click on the building, select hierarchy, you press M and move it to the Minerva collections. Now let's place the building. So 
to move the building, you have to click on it here. So it will select this little empty. So it's easier to move the building. Do not click on the building because it has a separate parts. So click here on the layers, click on the building here like that. And the building is actually pretty much where I want it. But just to show you, you click G on your keyboard. Let me activate the screencast. You click G on your keyboard and shift Z and you move the building where you want. So mine is pretty well placed, maybe here, somewhere here. Okay, it's okay for me. And now let's import more assets. Of course, I want this cargo ship, so let's do that. And in Blender, maybe you won't see uh, the ship, but it's there. And you can check that because we can see here that the ship is here. So you just click on the ship and G and Shift Z and you move it. So I would like to have my ship around here. Of course, all the imports I do and all the placements, it's really up to you. You can create your own scene according to what you want to design. This is just uh, my example, right? And then uh, one final element. And I will import this guy just to fill the scene and for the foreground element. So you click on it and G and Shift Z and you move your item wherever you want. I will move it around here. And maybe I will duplicate it another time. So you select uh, higher key, right click, select higher key and Alt D to spare some resource because we won't change anything. It's just about duplicating the assets. Okay, now let's import our last asset and that will be the vehicle rover. A G and Shift Z and I will move it around here. But I won't need this part, so let's just move it here. And this one I can delete. Yep. Let's move it back where I want. So around here. And I don't like the fact that my ground is uh, hiding a little bit too much of the uh, of the wheels. So you select the ground, you go back in modifier properties, and I will just raise it back like this. Yep. It's okay for me. Okay, now the ground is a little bit too uh, boring. So we could add some uh, rocks around. And for that, I use uh, mega scans. If you don't know about the mega scan and Quixel bridge, I made a full video uh, on this topic and I will put uh, the link in the description. Or you can just click on the card on the upper right. In mega scan, I have selected those uh, rocks. So you click on the rocks and 2K is okay for me and you just click export. Okay, cool, now we have the asset in a Blender. So let's see that. And let's move this asset somewhere here because I want to show you something. At the moment, there is an issue with this asset and you can clearly see that it's a really uh, shiny <laughs> asset. It's weird. It's because when you import the assets, it doesn't have the right uh, configuration for the nodes. For example, here, the normal map is not at the right place. So you have to move the normal map here and there is this uh, clear code at uh, white point four that's not good let's put it at zero and one more thing yes here we can see that the roughness is on the specular so let's move it back and now it's uh, way better so let's place uh, those uh, rocks and first i will duplicate it a few times alt d and g and shift z and scale it Maybe move it a little bit in the ground, something like that, because I want this rock to be on the foreground element, something like that, just in front of the camera to give some depth to the to the shot. And then I want maybe something around here. And the idea is just to give some interest to the ground to not have a flat boring uh, ground all right i think uh, we are good uh, with the rocks now let's take care of the light so we can see our first render for the lights i just uh, use an hdri and for that i always use the same hdris in all my projects uh, those are the uh, Sin Skies uh, HDRI. I will put the link uh, in the description. Those are paid HDRIs, but the quality is so good and it's uh, very easy 
to uh, integrate them in your scene because there is no ground it's only the skies and the mountains around so uh, it's perfect for scenes for anime car animations and things like that okay so i always use those uh, hdris and it was really a, a good investment for me but of course you can also use a free hdris and a good website to go is uh, polyhaven.com in uh, polyhaven you just go here on asset hdris and you will have 665 HDRIs to, to use. And you also have some HDRIs without uh, the ground. Okay, so I'm using the Scene Skies HDRIs plugin. So it's really easy to apply an HDRI. So you just select your collection and uh, Rough North and Forest, for example. And I did choose this one because uh, I love the, the lights. So I click on that and just press on Set Skies. In your camera view, you just go in the render preview mode and this is how it looks, pretty cool. But uh, I wanted to move the lights a little bit, so you click, so I did click on color tweaking and I changed the rotation to something like 175. Yes, because I wanted the light to, to come from this way. This is just uh, what I wanted for my scene, but of course it's really up to you. And if you don't know how to install an HD right, it's very uh, simple. I have a lot of videos in my YouTube channel to do that or on YouTube. So let's not waste time on this part. Okay, now that you have our lights, let's correctly place the focus point because I wanted my focus to be on uh, this ship. So you click on the focus point and seven maybe to go on uh, the top view and G and shift Z and you just move the focus point where you want it to be, something like that. Now I will go back in the camera and I don't know if I mentioned it, but I did change the focal length to 35 millimeter and I might change my f-stop maybe to 0.4 because I really want those foreground elements to be blurry. So maybe I will lower it a little bit more, 0.2. Yes, now it's very blurry around here. And this is what I want to have the focus on this part. Now concerning the mountains, I think it's a little bit empty around here. So let's fix that. We'll duplicate this guy. So Alt D and move it. Now it's uh, now okay. Nice. Now it's time to add some fog in the scene. And for that, just press uh, Shift A and Mesh and Cube. Let's move this guy G and Shift Z. And let's scale it. Now let's take care of the visibility of this cube. So you click on the cube, you come here in object properties, on viewport display, you change the displays as to a wire or bounds, it's up to you. Um, this uh, cube has no uh, material yet. So let's click new. You can delete the principal BSDF, uh, shift A and you search for volume and volume scatter, you connect the volume to the volume and let's change the density. If you have an issue with the density not displaying here on your camera, you just have to refresh uh, the display as. So here you go back in the object properties and you can select a wire instead of uh, bounds. So it will refresh the, the view because you can still select bounds and it, it will work fine, but I don't know why sometimes not refreshing the view when you're using bounds. So select wire or, or bounds, it's up to you. So now we can see that it's pretty intense because we can't uh, see anything. So let's allow the intensity to maybe 0.07. Yes. Okay. I prefer that. And once again, it's really up to you what you want to use. I decided, I decide to use this value, but you can use whatever you want. For my scene, I wanted to be a, a more darker uh, scene. Um, because I know that in post-production, I will raise the, all the, the lights. So I decided for my um, project to lower the, the sun strength. And I went for something like 2.9. You can do the same if you use uh, an HDRI, don't worry. You can just allow the, the strength of, uh, of your, your light. Now let's take care of, let's add some lights to our scene. And here, for example, I think it's pretty boring that the ship has uh, no light uh, inside. So let's add one, right click new collection and lights. And just to speed your render in the viewport, what you can do is if you come uh, here, 
in the sampling you can select 512 instead of, instead of 1000 for the viewport or maybe just 256 it's up to you and one thing we can do while we are still working on the scene is to hide the fog um, for the viewport view it will spare us some render time in the viewport so now for the light okay i click on this collection shift a and the light and let's go for a point and G and shift Z, let's move it around here. Let's uh, raise the strength. So you click on the light and here you go on this item, object data properties, and let's go for, I don't know, 30. Okay, so I end up uh, having a power of uh, 1000 and uh, I just uh, raise my light a little bit. So you can see it here just in front of this uh, item on the left side because I didn't want as I told you to have the source of the light visible so let's do one thing you click on the light and shift click on the spaceship and control P and just uh, object parent so now the light is moving with the ship so now what we could do to add more interest to the scene we, we could uh, duplicate this uh, ship the ship is here select hierarchy alt d and you move the guy wherever you want it okay now let's add some uh, flying ships in the sky let's go back in uh, solid mode and let's select a ship cargo this one for example let's raise it oops first select hierarchy and alt d and let's raise this guy and we don't need the light inside anymore we don't need this part those parts as well and we don't need that boom select hierarchy let's rotate this guy let's delete that and because the ship the ship is actually flying so maybe we don't need those rotation let's see which okay this is the guy okay we maybe this is more like the position it should have when it's flying wait is it the good side yes something like that you don't have to be very really precise because the ship will be very far and from there we just have to put the ship in the in the shot something like that you can put it <laughs> anywhere you want right this is just what i did for my for my scene uh, it's coming up to us so let's move it maybe a little bit here and let's take care of uh, the animation. And before that, let's just duplicate it one more time. So select hierarchy and alt D and shift Z and move another one like here. So let's just take care of this guy first. So let's say starting from here. First, let's go in keying and you select uh, location, rotation and scale. You press uh, I on your keyboard to add the keyframe and let's move the guy okay so i want it to come next to me so maybe like this let's say our animation will be um, 140 frames so let's do that now 140 and i press i let's move it again where i want it to be so maybe around here and i again and let's see the result Yes, and because it's already flying, I don't want it to slow down at the start and slow down at the end. I want it to have the same speed. So you select all the keyframes by pressing A on your keyboard, right click, interpolation mode, linear. Okay, so it's the same speed all along. Okay, nice. Let's do the second one. So this guy, and maybe this guy could be around here. Okay, so frame one, I press I on my keyboard. This guy is starting to go down. Why not? And e, interpolation mode linear. Let's see the result. Okay, cool. And now let's take care of this uh, rover. And where is it? Okay, it's here. So let's name it rover. So easier to find. And let's move it. G. 
I strongly uh, invite you to download my Rigeka add-on fix. The link will be in the description um, because the one on the official website is bugged for Blender 3.6 or 3.5. So the first thing we need to do before we can rig this guy is to isolate the body and the wheels. So let's do that. So what we can do is you click on this wheel, okay, or maybe this one. Let's start with this one. And here in uh, the layers, you click on numpad period just to isolate uh, this uh, wheel. So here we have the focus on this wheel. Okay, this is the rover, and this is uh, this, those are all the different parts. And here we can see that we have this wheel. But how many parts are um, on this wheel? Let's hide it. Hey, we are lucky. So this is only one part. It means that we can rename this wheel because the Rigoka add-on, I don't know if you know that, but need specific names in order to rig the thing automatically. So this one is the uh, front, uh, I think it's uh, front left. Okay, so here you name this wheel front left. Okay, so let's do the same for this guy. This one is front right. And for the back wheels, this guy, let's rename it back left. And this guy is back uh, right. And here you have exactly how you should uh, name. So wheel point bbk point l. I think I will put those names in the description. So it's uh, you just have to copy paste uh, everything. And now, it means that we can select everything else here and here. And normally, yeah, that's uh, all the stuff. And Control and J. Boom. So now we only have one part and we will name this part body. Okay, cool. So now we have five parts, the body and the four wheels. It means that we are ready to apply the Rigoka add-on. So let's select the five parts. And before that, be sure to install the Riga car add-on. Okay, so here in Edit Preferences, Riga car, and you should have this Riga car add-on activated. If you don't know how to do that, I will put the link in the description for my video. Okay, from there, let's create a collection with our different parts. First, let's detach the parts from this empty. So you select all the parts, and Alt P and clear and keep transform. Boom. So now we don't need this empty anymore. You can delete this and you select body, wheel with control. Okay. And M to move to a new collection. Let's name this collection Rover. Okay. So now we have the different parts in a new collection named Rover. Let's select all the parts again and R and Z and move this rover until you have a rotation of exactly 90 degrees, just like that here, 90 degrees. Perfect. You select all the parts, okay, shift A, armature and car deformation rig. If you don't have this car deformation rig, it's because you didn't install the uh, Rigo car add-on. So you click on that, boom. And now, as you can see, we have the the bones installed automatically for us okay we have nearly <laughs> nothing to do okay everything the, the wheels here you can see the bones it's perfectly aligned with the wheels and all the stuff the only thing is uh, this part okay you so you don't click anywhere okay you don't click anywhere if you already clicked just control z okay and you, you come back and here this little window you click on that and what we want the body the body is not align because you need this part to be roughly in the middle of your car. What I mean is you move this guy around here, okay? Because this is where you want the rotation to happen if you drift or something like that. Okay, and let's just move it a bit just to have the middle of the, the ball here. You want it um, half in the car and half outside, something like that. You don't have to be precise, okay? It's just rough estimation and try to place this ball the first one in the middle of the car and you will you will understand why and from there you will see the rigor car add-on okay and you press generate it's okay if you don't see your car anymore it's because it's been moved to the origin so let's go back in object mode and here you will have the guy so click on the rig and the car rig will be here in collection 
so G and shift Z and now you will have the rig installed on your car and let's see if it's working fine you click on the rig control and tab to go in pause mode and now if I moved it with G here you can see that it's drifting perfectly the wheels rotation and all the stuff the bumps everything is installed okay now that we have the rig installed it's time to uh, animate the rover and the idea is we want the rover to uh, maybe turn around uh, here in the scene so let's add a path for that so shift a and you go on curve and path let's move this guy around here where is it it's an origin of the world I should really move the origin but I'm lazy okay so let's move it minus 90 degrees let's move it around here so I can have a better view let's scale it K okay. and G and X oops if I try to G and X it's not moving because I have this proportional editing activated just press O to deactivate the proportional editing if you still have it activated because we created the mountains let's do it again G and X and now I have this curve cool I have this curve here that's perfect this is exactly what I want so now let's place our rover on this uh, path and let's name this uh, path and you click on the rig you go in pause mode you click on this blue rig okay this blue rig let's rate that you go on the blue uh, bone constraint properties okay the blue one add bone constraint and follow path and we want to follow which path this is the path we want to follow and if your car is disappearing it's maybe because uh, here you go in object properties and you put everything to zero 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 and zero and here is our car you go back in bone constraint properties follow curve and fix position all right and we want to move forward and our forward here is the minus y axis so like this and uh, we start at one so here you go on frame number one offset factor you press i you place your cursor on the offset factor and you press i on your keyboard to add the first keyframe and let's add the, the last keyframe you move until you have one and you press i again don't forget that we want an uh, animation that is linear and here we go our rover is moving that's perfect now we can animate the wheels and the steering with the regular car add-on so big car steering okay big wheel rotation okay and that's it look at this the wheels and the rotation woohoo clean okay so now we can move back our rover where we want it to be let's select the path let's go be sure to be in object mode and g and shift z let's move the guy where we want it something like that and let's test yes that's perfect now let's check a render just to see what we could improve however animation is pretty cool so i think it should be the star of the show so why not put a light uh, directly hitting on it and we could use a street lamp for that and you're going to tell me hey Joanne, they don't have street lamps in the sky yeah but we arrived so we we can have a, a street lamp okay available <laughs> <laughs> okay so let's go back one thing before we continue as well uh, I didn't mention that but it's very clever to go in your camera because you have the framing and press I on your keyboard just to lock the camera what I mean is let's say you change the framing of your camera and now how do you go back to the old framing it's uh, very difficult so I mean it's nearly impossible so yeah it's good to have this um, keyframe so it means that even if you move the, your, your camera framing by mistake, you just have to move the, the framing to uh, number one and you will have your uh, camera framing back. Okay, so let's add a, a light uh, around here. I will go in my asset browser because this is where I have all my stuff. Let's add this string lamp. Okay, so just grab it and drop it here. I correct the Z to be zero so now it's around here let's move the guy my string clamp is there but it's uh, way too small so i'm gonna scale it something like that and by the way guys this uh, string clamp is coming from my city pack uh, if you don't have it you should definitely uh, <laughs> download it 
and uh, you will have great stuff in that. I will put the link in the description. But just for you to follow along, I will provide this uh, string lamp so you can uh, follow with me. So here, and uh, let's check the area light. I think it's an area light. Yes, it's an area light. Uh, let's see the results, so Z and rendered, and cool, so we have uh, the light hitting here on the, the, the car. And what we could do as well is change the color, so it's very red, so we need something maybe a little bit yellow, something like that. Let's do a render so we can see uh, the, the actual result. So this is the actual results and I think it looks uh, pretty cool. Maybe we could raise this uh, street lamp a little bit more. So let's do that now. I just click on the lamp, you press uh, tab to go in edit mode, you select the bottom here and you press E and Z to extrude on the Z axis, just like that. Let's go back and maybe now we can raise it a little bit more. So street decoration, G and Z. Now the final touches, and I just uh, discovered that uh, a few days ago, but there is uh, this, uh, wait, if you see those pixels everywhere, just right click and shade smooth. Yeah, so it's better. And to add some depth, animation, and sexiness <laughs> to your shot, I discovered this uh, add-on, which is uh, incredibly good. This is a Steam Pack by uh, Hian, and I think it's fantastic, <laughs> and I did use it uh, in this scene, and really this is a, a great uh, add-on to have. Okay, this is this, this thing in Steam, and I think I will do another video especially for that. You will have a lot of Steam, animated Steam, to put in your scene, and the great thing is this is just plain images, animated plain images, and it will not penalize your render time. So let me show you how it works. So you select your, for example, this one, the slot 4, and you just press add insert. You have this new collection, inserts, where you will have this plain image available. So let's move this image around here. And one thing, because it's a plain image, uh, you want it to feel 3D. So one cool thing is you can um, copy the rotation of your camera so it will always face you. So you click on this uh, plain image, let's scale it. You click on it and you go in um, Object Constraint Properties and Add Object Constraint and you can select copy rotation and let's copy the rotation of the camera so you select your camera so now it will be like that just <laughs> laid on the floor just remove the x and now it's good so let's uh, move the guy where we want it to be maybe somewhere around there let's scale it okay so now if i press you see here you have this uh, animation going on and I, I, I think it's pretty cool. I love that. <laughs> I really love that. And here you go in Shader Editor and from there you will have everything ready and Shift A, search for color ramp and just move a color ramp around here. You select this guy, the last one and you can lower the intensity if you want. So yeah, just like this, maybe I move it up a little bit. Yes, great. And you can add many, many themes. So I think now in all my projects, I will use those, <laughs> those themes because it looks, so, it looks so cool. And I will put the link in the description if you want to check that. Now the final touch would be to animate the camera. So let's do that now. So the camera is here, and for the last frame, all I want to do, so you go on frame 140, you press control on your keyboard, and you move, you press the middle mouse button, and you move up just to do this uh, dolly shot. Let's try to do that now, and right, um, right click, interpolation mode linear, don't forget to do that. Yes, you see, everything is moving. Perfect. Now let's uh, render the thing and I will show you what I did 
in uh, DaVinci Resolve to have the final uh, result. Okay, so here we are in DaVinci Resolve and this is pretty much uh, what uh, we rendered. It's not the same uh, street lamp because I used the render I already did <laughs> because I did not want to spend a few hours to render the scene again, but it's pretty much what I did. If you really want me to show you how I did these floating uh, particles in uh, Blender, uh, just ask me in the comment section. Uh, here you can see how much the, the fog is adding to the, to the scene and uh, how great it is. What I did in DaVinci Resolve, I just uh, add a, a, flare, a lens flare effect. This is the guy here, okay, lens flare. And it's very easy in DaVinci Resolve to do that. You just go in Effect and you search for uh, Lens, not Audio, of course, in uh, OpenFX, and you have a Lens Flare. You just move the Lens Flare wherever you want. And for this Lens Flare, I did select the Ghost and Anamorphic Trick, and I changed the color to blue. And by the way, guys, don't forget that DaVinci Resolve, I always like to use it because it's free. And for the grading, this is the final grading. Boom. And for the grading, you just click on your clip, you go in grading. For the first one, I raised the highlights to 1.4 to have more highlights uh, in the scene. And here, for this special grading, I use the Fill Convert uh, plugin in uh, DaVinci Resolve in order to have this final look. If I press Ctrl D, you can see how much this uh, plugin is uh, bringing to the table. I'm using it since uh, a long time now for all my, my past movies and stuff like that. It's uh, very fast to use. You just move it on the clip itself and then you have this great result. Okay, for this scene, it's pretty much the same. It's just about the camera movements and you have all the steaming that I, I, I added. And for this one, you already know how to animate the rover, so that's uh, easy to do. And for this one, for this shot, okay, it's the same thing. I just chose an HDRI with uh, the light uh, in front of uh, me, okay, this um, golden hour time, and because it looks pretty damn good. For this uh, character, I did the select here in characters. I have selected this guy, okay, and from there, I just select an animation. So I think I went for idle. Yes, you just select animation, something like that, or whatever you want, okay, and then I put the guy here in Blender, I just import that in Blender. If you want a tutorial, a full tutorial on that, you can ask me, but it's really the same thing that I do in all my animations, so if you really want me to show you how I did that, just ask me in the comment section. And for this scene, I just use uh, the same thing, this mutant for uh, from Mixamo with a breathing animation. And just in the shaders, I just play with the roughness in order to have this wet feeling that is more organic for the for the mutant. Okay, guys, I hope you like this uh, tutorial. Don't hesitate if you have questions or if you feel that I went a little bit too fast or some items. I will create some more videos if uh, needed. Thanks for watching. I talk to you soon. Bye bye.